seconds. Can you hear me, Phil? Oh, oh my gosh, too clear. What? I just whispered, I said, can you hear me, Phil? <laughs> bit, of, bit of ASMR. <laughs> Hi, my name is Harrison Wood. I'm one of the drummers here at Hillsong Church. Uh, I've been playing for Hillsong Worship for many years. Uh, this is also one of our awesome drummers uh, here at the Hills Campus, Brenton Maunder. And we're here today to talk to you about um, drumming and a lot of the approaches that we have to drumming and um, trying to kind of cover a bunch of bases that will help you and empower you and sort of give you something to, um, to jump right off when it comes to your own personal playing. Yeah, perfect. We're so glad you've joined us. Thank you for being here. And certainly we're excited for some of the topics that we're going to cover. And a few of those are going to be, we're going to start by exploring what it means for us to practically to prepare. And as part of our practice as well, maybe looking as well a bit of the setup of the drum kit and, uh, and how we approach that for us and hopefully give you some tips of how that can apply for you as well. Um, moving from that, we're also going to explore what it means to tune our drum kit. Again, some of our personal preferences and what works for us. And uh, after that, we're going to explore what it maybe means for us to prepare spiritually. What are some of the things that we should be aware of? What are some of the things that we do as part of our spiritual preparation for uh, drumming in a worship music context? And then uh, following from that, we're going to get nice and practical and actually talk about in the room, when we're live in a service, what are some of the things that we're thinking about? What are some of the aspects and what, what are we approaching? How are we approaching uh, our drumming in relation to live there in the room? Um, but as we said, let's start with our practice and our preparation. And so uh, what better place to start, Harry, you are in your natural habitat behind the <laughs> drum kit, um, ready to go. Let's talk about uh, how we set up our drum kit and uh, maybe some of the approaches that we take when we're, um, when we're thinking about that. So maybe talk us through um, what you've got here, why, why you've set up the way you did, maybe even uh, some of the choices you make and where you start. Yeah, so I guess like um, just basic ergonomics of the kit. Um, for me, I want to be able to sit at the kit comfortably. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're not inhibiting any like, you know, of our main joints or the limbs that we use to actually play. Um, we want to make sure that the way we sit is going to be obviously correct posture. It's basically going to help give us more longevity and service long term. So um, I think just when approaching the kit and sitting at the drum kit, you want to kind of think of your physical health as well. Um, I know for me and in, in, in my life, that's come up many times. Uh, where I've had to stop and actually really think about um, things like my posture, the levels of things, um, and just my overall physical health when it comes to playing the drums. Otherwise, I, it would start to inhibit me playing any longer. We've had, we've had a few of our drummers that have had some issues with their um, body when it comes to drumming. So I think this is something that's so important to touch on. I yeah. think so, yeah. Um, I guess uh, it's, it's important to set up uh, in a way that you feel like is right for you, obviously. Um, the way I sit is going to be different to the way somebody else sits. But for me, I guess having um, uh, things uh, at a level that um, is going to enable me to sort of help um, me sit up straight, help my back uh, stay straight, but also um, at a height where um, I'm not uh, compressing um, certain uh, muscles in my body, like my hip flexors, I'm not really creating any like um, compression on my flexion points. So I'm making sure that I'm sitting at the drum kit in a healthy and natural way. Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess I know that some drummers think about what looks cool when it comes to a drum kit. Yeah. Um, that's hopefully not the thing that we're focusing on, uh, right? I mean, I don't know if that plays into it at all for you. If, if I'm being honest, there's probably a tendency to do that a little bit, but obviously ergonomics is going to be what's most important. Yeah, I think there's going to be like aesthetic. You want to make sure that like the way that you're sitting and um, the way that you're playing is going to be great, but also you want like the kit to not look super awkward. I guess in context of things, and um, it's some people think about that, some people don't. But um, yeah, it's obviously uh, the, you definitely have to find the balance for sure. Yeah, perfect. Um, if I can maybe point out one thing I've noticed in your setup is that your snare drum is quite high and your floor tom is a little bit lower. Yeah. Can you? I've, I've actually adopted a similar practice. Can you let us know why you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess for me, um, the way that I play, um, I'm going to be making sure. I guess if the snare was any lower. Um, my, my hand or my, my arm, my wrist would be coming down a little bit lower and it sort of will give me the tendency, like especially for me, to want to, um, I guess, lean into um, the snare a little bit more with the rest of my body, especially like thoracic spine. So I'm going to be like arching my back a little bit more. So uh, the reason why I brought the snare up in particular is because I knew that that would then uh, in turn force me to sort of sit a little bit straighter and just so I could kind of reach that 
the snare a little bit um, better. And also, I guess the floor tom stayed where it was is because um, I guess it didn't really require as much of, it wasn't exactly as much of a focal point as the snare was. So I could kind of still leave it there. Yeah, makes sense. In our context, often the sound that we're wanting to get from our snare drum is to play a rim shot. So this is where um, the center of our stick, if you look at Harry's sticks, you can probably see that they're all um, torn or what, whatever you call that in the middle. <laughs> yeah, these ones. Um, and this is because we're hitting the snare drum. As we're attacking the snare drum, the center of our stick is also hitting the rim of the snare. It's going to give it a bit of a beefier sound. Uh, I've found a lot of our drummers, if it's too low, to still get that same sound. This, the hands are probably going to be down here to make sure they're really hitting the rim. Yeah. So I've, I've adopted a similar approach where snare drum's a bit higher, so we are sitting up and yeah. to still get that rim shot sound. Um, again, this is what works for Harry or maybe for some of our drummers here. You need to find what works for you as a drummer as well. Yeah. Um, in saying that, Harry, what would be, maybe be some of the go-tos that you'd recommend for all of our drummers? Um, it might not be specific heights, but even some of the general approaches. Um, I think, yeah, I think you just need to stay aware of what your body's doing when you're placing your your hands around the kit. I think you just want to be aware of um, just your your lever points. Just sort of, I guess, like you said, like holding your hands very low is going to sort of like sort of get your shoulders down a little bit more. So bring it up is going to like push my shoulders back a little bit more. I think it's just thinking practically about it. And if you can stay aware of the shape that your body sits in, um, I think that's going to be really important. Perfect. Yeah. I know a lot of us see physios as well, and that might seem like a bit of an extreme step to take. If you're maybe even a young drummer, or maybe you're not, but you plan on drumming for the next 30, 40 years of your life, investing in a couple of sessions with um, maybe a physio or someone like that that can give us some advice in our setup yep. might be a worthwhile investment. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so we're talking about looking after our body. This is kind of where we're starting as part of, part of our um, practical preparation. Let's also talk about warming up maybe and stretches as well. Some of the things that we'll do before we jump on the drum kit into a service to make sure that we are physically prepared. Um, yep. And what maybe, what are some of the exercises that you'll do? Um, I guess for me, um, I mean, look, I, again, um, a lot of this is, is preference and, what, and what, works for, what works for you. But I think, um, uh, look, you, you can't go wrong with some of the classics kind of like warming up on a practice pad. Um, and I think if you, as long as you just do your exercises, get warmed up, I think you're just going to be able to sort of further um, prevent yourself from, you know, potential injury, especially if you're playing longer sets. Um, so I think warming up on the practice pad is a great one. Obviously, stretching is another good one because you're using all four limbs while you're playing at the kit. So um, things just, you know, like hip flex stretches, hamstring stretches, all the kinds of things that you feel like would be great for you to warm up and make sure that your body is just not, you know, you're basically setting yourself up for a win. Um, I know that, um, especially when we're on the road, sometimes the nights can end up being two to two and a half hours, which is a long time to play. And you're activating everything in the seated position. So you wanna make sure that everything is at least warmed up um, before you <laughs> head into a pretty um, intense um, session. So um, I think, yeah, for me, sometimes you'll find me, if I don't have a practice pad on hand, I'll sort of flip the sticks over and I'll, I'll kind of do this. And just on the back of my arms That's because a little it, bit cute. Yeah, exactly. So I like uh, I'll use just like the the underside of my hand, just my fingers, to kind of like pretty much what my fingers are already doing on this side. But I just flip the sticks around and do it just so they've got somewhere else. So I can't <laughs> help but laugh when I see you do that. It looks great. <laughs> it is a bit funny, but I think it just enables you to walk around. You can do it anywhere. So mm -hmm. I think even just warming up that way might help. But. Yeah. This is maybe something that's a bit overlooked as well, in my opinion. And if I'm being honest, probably something that I don't focus on still enough, this idea of warming up and stretching. You mentioned for longer stints, you're more are you more likely to warm up and to spend a bit more time doing that? And I guess my question would be, if we're being honest as well, how often do you do that? And how long do you spend doing that if you're um, warming up? Um, look, I guess it, it doesn't need to be a workout session because I think playing sometimes is going to be your workout anyway. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's important to kind of um, know what's best for your body and where you're at. I think um, maybe like 15 minutes, I feel like is good. Um, you know, just to sort of cover all your bases, make sure you just, you know, as they say, limber up. But, you know, I think, yeah, um, you don't have to stress about it. I think it's just making sure that you're, you're looking after yourself or at least preparing yourself in the right way. Yeah. So. Yeah. For sure. Mm. Perfect. And so I guess what we haven't done, we haven't given you specific exercises. That wasn't our goal or our focus today. You can certainly find those yourself yeah. online. And um, I'll speak to like a professional, as you said, like a physio, um, you know, physical health professional will, will definitely help you out. 
Perfect. Yeah, wonderful. Um, okay, let's move on to why preparation is important. We've spoken, I guess, a bit about warming up our body, um, focusing on how our drum kit is set up, thinking about actual practice itself. What are some of the reasons why preparation and practice is so important, um, especially when it comes to worship music drumming? Um, I would say um, it, it allows you not to be, I guess, so limited in your approach uh, when thinking about like playing literally, playing drums, um, because your main focus is when you're in church or at least in, in a worship set is, is worship. And you're focusing on where the rest of the band is going. You're focusing on the congregation. You're focusing on um, a whole lot of different things. So I think um, it's important to make sure that you are confident enough um, around the kit and your application of what you've been practicing so you don't actually have to think about it. You know, it's almost like second nature when you're playing. So it becomes as less of a distraction to you. So I think it's important to make sure that you're up to speed on all of those things and the application around the kit, uh, that you don't necessarily have to think about actually playing so much, but you can focus on the more important things uh, in, your, in your context. Yeah, perfect. I imagine there might be drummers out there. Um, maybe you find yourself at the moment or maybe you can remember a time where we were so focused on what we were playing as a drummer that we didn't, our, our eyes were literally on our drum kit down at what we were doing rather than being able to look around at what's happening in a live worship music set. And um, there's so much that we want to be paying attention to. What's happening with the congregation? What's the Holy Spirit doing? Um, so many different aspects that we're wanting to pay attention to. And like you said, if, if that can maybe come a little bit... Um, uh, second nature, or if it happens, uh, I don't like this term autopilot, but we're not mm. thinking so much about that, allows us to think about so many other different things. 100%, yeah. And I think if you've got ease of access around the kit, and I think if you're making it so, you're making it so the stuff that you've been practicing is making it easier to get around the kit, um, that's going to be less of a distraction to you. Uh, and so, yeah, you can focus on the more important things, you know, like other people speaking to you through MD mic, or other people kind of giving you hand signals or, you know, things could go anywhere. So I think you're just being, um, you know, prepared for those moments rather than kind of going, what am I thinking about? You know, what, what do I need to play next? Yeah. That, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's actually so practical. A couple of things you just mentioned there. Our music director might make a signal to us. Maybe if we don't, especially if we're not using in-ears and we don't have someone who can speak to us, which certainly allows us to go a bit on autopilot. Mm. We don't have to have our eyes up because they're just going to tell us anyway. But if we're looking around, maybe our music director might um, do a physical gesture that might indicate what's happening next. But yeah. if we're so focused on what we're playing, we might miss those other cues, yeah. those um, non-verbal cues. And then the other one you mentioned as well, we can think about what's coming up ahead. If we're so focused on what we're doing now, we're not thinking maybe of how we're going to transition into the next section. Yeah. And as a drummer, we're really leading a lot of that, the dynamics, and we want to make sure that we're leading into that um, intentionally so we can be thinking a bit ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Beautiful. That's great. In our last couple of minutes together in this session, one of the things that we wanted to focus on is this idea of what we've called tools in your tool belt. Um, so maybe, Harry, do you want to explain a bit about this and um, yeah, what we're, what we're looking at? Um, okay, so basically we're going to be talking about just, I guess, the classic notion of, of less is more. Less will sound better uh, when it's actually a choice, not a limitation. And that hit home for me quite a lot because thinking about that, um, if you have come... Uh, ready, prepared, and you're, I guess, maybe a little bit more of a seasoned player, I, th I think less will uh, evidently sound different um, when it's a choice for you because it'll sound intentional as opposed to feeling like it's more of a limitation, like you're trying to meet the standard of what you're actually playing. So I think um, regardless of like how much you, you, you know, might want to bring the latest fill that you've been practicing or the latest rudiment that you've been doing to the, to the, to the drum kit um, or to church that week, um, I think uh, actively pursuing what works for your context and you know, I guess that could mean necessarily like playing less in that moment. Um, it, it sounds different than as, as opposed to um, if you had just come prepared with that one thing and can't really go beyond that, or you're kind of hitting a ceiling uh, for your drumming uh, vocabulary. 
Yeah, incredible. And we're going to touch a little bit more on that in our last session where we do explore um, this concept of less is more in a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we were talking about as well, Harry, is some of the different genres of music that we might um, find ourselves playing or learning or even just listening to, but hopefully playing as well in order to have these extra tools in our tool belt, as you mentioned, so that it's not a limitation. I could play more. However, I'm choosing maybe not to. Yeah. Um, do you have some examples of some of maybe the music that you've listened to and how that has inspired your drumming and maybe some specific parts? Yeah, I think um, over time, I guess my influences have, have really changed, but I grew up on um, a lot of jazz and, and funk players. Um, you know, I guess some of the, the notable ones, I guess that most people have probably looked up to, guys like Dave Weckl, yeah. Steve Gadd, Winnie Colliuta, all those great guys. But I, um, I, I guess over time, um, you know, your, your um, musical tastes kind of change and you explore other avenues and things like that, you know. Um, so your application uh, from what you're learning um, to playing in different contexts. I think guys like David Garibaldi, um, other gospel players like um, Chris Coleman, uh, different players like that who come from different backgrounds and have different playing styles uh, have really influenced the way that I bring my best to what I play in church. Uh, I definitely, one thing that I, I feel like is important is that um, what excellence and what my best looks like in that situation is how I've developed my vocabulary and my drumming uh, skill set. So by the time I do bring that into church, I can actually uh, bring something a little bit more than just uh, what needs to be there. It might add that extra bit or that extra sound or something that wasn't there before that actually kind of helps it or elevates it or embellishes some part of the song in some kind of way. So I think like um, growing up in jazz, jazz fusion, funk, gospel, all that kind of stuff has really helped me be able to uh, approach parts and playing the kit and playing at church in a, in a, a lot more of a creative way. Um, I guess one example that we were talking about was the song This I Believe. Uh, it's very um, subtle, but I think one thing that I, I remembered and I guess in my, it's, it's kind of a default for me sometimes now, but I think one thing that I was thinking about just in terms of that groove um, was there was just a little um, interjection from the hi-hat in, uh, in the open groove, in, the, in the, um, the open parts of that song. So I'll just give you an example of that now. So you can see what I was doing there, just in between um, in the spaces, I was kind of filling in those gaps a little bit with a little bit more of a rhythmic feature, just an open and closed hi-hat. It's really small, but I think it does something to the groove, which adds just a little bit more sauce, you know what I mean? Totally, yeah. Um, so I think just bringing some of those elements for me, I guess, um, and that is an example, is just one way that I guess I bring some of what I've been influenced by to the church context, or at least um, the context of CCM. So, yeah. yeah. Perfect. I'm excited to explore um, that a little bit more, this concept of less is more. Um, you've added something there, but it has been such a, um, uh, I was gonna say minuscule, a, a, a small addition with the hi-hat that's not taking away too much mm. or adding too much, but at the same time, it certainly, um, it doesn't, it adds to what the song's doing and it gives definitely a bit of a, um, a feel. And as you mentioned, kind yeah. of from this um, jazz genre, that's really great. Um, that we're probably going to conclude our, our first session there. I hope that's been helpful so far, the things that we've touched on. And um, we'll see you for our next session where we're going to look at some aspects of our spiritual preparation.